Alright everyone, welcome back to my Kerbal Space Program tutorial series featuring the Interstellar Extended Mod and today I want to talk about thermonuclear propulsion. Um, if you remember the last video I made, I talked about the different categories of engines and you can, if you haven't watched that you can see a link down in the description or an annotation right here. Um, but today I want to talk about yeah, thermonuclear propulsion. So I prepared another testbed with all the different engines. Uh, it's a lot of stuff. So these are the engines that I want to talk about today. Alright, so the first engine that you have in the thermonuclear category is this really tiny Kendall engine. This is basically, as it states in the description, whoops, here is the description. It's an RTG. You pump fuel through the core into a nozzle and you have a small nuclear rocket. Basically, that is as simple as it gets for nuclear rockets, right? Hot core, propellant through it, gets expanded, thrust. So this thing is very good for small probes because it's very light and it's also surface attachable. So I can put like a bunch of those uh, if, if the game would let me. Oh wait, no, it doesn't. It doesn't matter. Um, so you can put, usually you can put a bunch of those surface attachable things like all over the place. For example, yeah, here you can see it. Yeah, you can put a bunch of those surface attachable and those are very easy to use. They have a pretty small uh, waste heat footprint and yeah, you shouldn't worry too much. Like these are easy to use. They have a decent ISP. I think it's with hydrogen, it's around 1000. And so you can get some early long-range probe, probe action going. Um, this baby solid core nuclear engine. This is the yeah the Nerva analog. You have in the stock game. You have yeah this one, and yeah it's basically the same model, um, a little different, but and has different features. For starters, the it usually uses hydrogen. And with hydrogen, it has a slightly higher ISP and almost similar thrust. Because in theory, the Nerva, yeah, liquid fuel is kind of a hydrogen analog, so should come out to the same thing. But you also have the option, if you look here, you have the propellant hydrogen, but you also have the option, yeah, to use a bunch of other fuels and, yeah, get other effects. But the fuels I'll talk about later. Um, <clears throat> these two here are primarily thermal turbojets or thermal ramjets. Um, this means their primary use is to operate in an atmosphere and basically take the atmosphere, run it around the hot reactor and use the matter in the atmosphere as reaction mass. So you can make very long endurance planes with that. Um, or, or very fast going planes. Yeah, because you basically you don't need any propellant in theory. But with upgrades, these also support different propellants. So I've set them up to hydrogen right now just to show them off in comparison to the other engines. And yeah, in hydrogen, hydrogen mode, you basically, they work as a thermal nozzle or a thermal turbojet. Um, this baby right here is a little bit more exotic engine. Um, the description right here, it states, yeah, it's basically the improving upon the basic LVN formula. LVN is this engine. Um, the Neptune uses excess heat generated by the reactor to run a compact generator system. So you have a generator implemented in this, so you don't need extra electric generation for your spacecraft. Um, producing two kilowatts of electric power. It's not that much, so you cannot run any electric engines of that very well. But the engine also features a third mode, hence the name, where oxidizer is injected into the exhaust, causing instantaneous combustion and reportedly violent acceleration. All right, what does that mean? Um, that means that this engine has the option to use um, oxidizer propellants or oxidizer containing propellants so usually you use hydrogen, you get decent thrust, decent ISP, or pretty good thrust and decent ISP, but you also have the options to use 
um, here hydrolux and methylux propellants and this significantly lowers your ISP but significantly increases your thrust. I'll show you that later. Um, I have this tank set up to hydrolux and I'll show you the thrust difference and it's really big. It's, this one is a pretty nice launch nozzle. So is this one. This one is a closed cycle gas core engine. Um, closed cycle means that um, the products of the nuclear reaction or the reactor products are not expelled in the exhaust as compared to the open core, which I'll talk in a second. Um, and the closed cycle basically means you have the hot reactor core somewhere in here and you run the propellant on the outside around that hot reactor core, you cool it by doing that and um, you also get a pretty efficient heating. Um, you know, the description states this pretty well in my opinion. The closed cycle gas core engine light bulb overcomes the limits of solid core um, nuclear flame rockets by deliberately letting the reactor melt and vaporize, reaching much higher core temperatures and exhaust velocities, which grants this rocket enormous ISPs of 1500s. That's a bit old. Um, it can get even higher than that right now. Um, no radioactive material leaves the engine though. The vaporized nuclear hellfire is safely contained within seven astonishingly fragile transparent quartz bulbs, which let most of the thermal radiation through to the propellant and the reason for its lovely name. Sophisticated system of active cooling and steady vortex stream of the inert gas around the fissioning nuclear plasma that keeps it from touching the walls prevent the quartz bulbs from spontaneously vaporizing. Yeah, so that's basically the technicalities how it works. Um, as you can see in the sketch here, yeah, you basically you have these quartz containers where the hot reactor core is sitting in, propellant running all over it, around it, cooling the whole system down and um, keeping the whole thing kind of confined so that it doesn't melt, explode or whatever. And you have a high core temperature, so higher ISP than solid core. Um, the next concept is the open cycle gas core reactor. This one is a little bit more specialized, um, or what is specialized? It's um, more violent, I'd say, because open cycle, as compared to this, you throw the nuclear stuff out the back or nuclear containing stuff out the back. You basically have the hot reactor core in the middle. You st still run the propellant around it, but the hot reactor um, gases or hot reactor gases also escape through the nozzle. So you have a radioactive gas coming out the back and the propellant is used to direct that stream in one direction, heat up the propellant again, provide thrust. This one has a ridiculously high core temperature. You can see here it goes up to 5800 Kelvin, um, which is really high. And this grants you very high ISPs of up to 5000. So this one is a very, very efficient engine. Not the highest thrust, but you can do some really nice advanced long range ships with, with that. Description states anything that I haven't said. Heating is reactor core to an awesome 6000 Kelvin. Yeah, the 6000 Kelvin is the reactor core in idle mode. Um, the Liberator imparts so much freedom on the atoms that they immediately leave the confidence of the reactor generating exceptional thrust and specific impulse. The reactor is highly energetic and core itself does not escape. Yeah, that's basically the core is really, really energetic. The propellant really needs to be directed in a smart way around it and to confine the whole thing. I don't know if you can see it here. Okay, you have this tiny, um, if I extend the nozzle, this is also a cool animation. You have this extending nozzle because longer nozzles mean more efficient um, propulsion, higher specific impulses as well. And yeah, you have this really small area here. This is the area where we reach Mach 1. And all this stuff here is bundled. The propellant is ran around it. And in the end, everything hot, really energetic gas escapes here out the back. So far, um, so these are all-in-one solutions. I say all in one because you don't need any extra parts apart from radiators to make these work. 
you don't need any combination of parts. You just stick those on and you have your desired effect. You choose your propellant. Um, and these are the real thermonuclear rockets. But then you also have thermal nozzles or thermal rocket parts. Um, you have for one, you have the thermal turbojet and the thermal ramjet nozzle. I think since the latest update, these operate the same way because uh, the author also introduced this plasma nozzle, or if you would let me attach, this plasma nozzle, which basically acts the same way the thermal remit nozzle did in the updates before. So um, I don't think these have any difference right now. So I'm just going to talk about one of them, but you also have this thermal launch nozzle. Um, all right, yeah, whatever. So the those nozzles, basically, they use the heat generated by a reactor, again, to vaporize or expand your propellant and channel that through their respective nozzles and produce thrust. The concepts behind that are um, a little different. The thermal launch nozzle is designed to also um, feature like or to also be able to use those oxidizer propellants to create higher thrusts at lower specific impulses. So if I go here and select yeah hydrolux you can see again this can have lower specific impulses than this one right now, but much higher thrusts. Um, in general the ISPs generated by this look ridiculously high and that is because I attached those to plasma beam core antimatter reactors. That's just for demonstration purposes. Like I didn't, I don't want to get into reactors right now because there are a lot of options. Like you can see here, is all the different reactors with different advantages and disadvantages. So to make it simple, I just took the most powerful and kind of easy to use reactor. You have the antimatter reactor, and you just need a supply of antimatter, and you plug a nozzle on that, and it will generate your thrust. All right, so let's get this all stuff in space and I can show you a little more. All right, so here we are in space again and um, I, put, I just edited the whole thing into orbit so I can show all these engines off. I'm not gonna show them off on the launch pad because only few of those are really designed for launching. I'll make maybe a quick shot of that later, but for now let's just activate all these engines one by one, and yeah, you see this one, 1048 ISP with hydrogen, and you're not supposed to activate. Yeah, you have a very tiny IS, uh, tiny thrust, four kilonewtons, but this engine, remember, is also very, very light. The solid core engine is also just attached to a fuel tank. It has the same ISP, but a higher thrust. They operate by the same principle, so bigger means more thrust, but same ISP. This one, thermal turbojet, it has a much higher thrust, but again, it's also way bigger. Um, specific impulses, still almost the same. This one, even higher. Um, thrust, but again, this engine is again heavier than this one, so more means more, or <laughs> bigger is always better. Um, but yeah, those are operate in a very similar principles, and um, thus you don't have a lot of differences. It's just the bigger the engine, the more thrust you get. And would you please just stop spinning? Thank you. I don't have enough reaction wheels, I just have this huge tank to sh have enough time or I just wanted to have a lot of mass in the middle so that it wouldn't turn as much, but apparently I didn't succeed at that. Anyway, these are operate all by the solid core um, principle and this one is the first to be a little bit more interesting. Um, in the default setup you have uh, 1100 ISP, but at a pretty nice thrust and do note that the thrust is steadily declining. Alright, um, this is 
because you can see here core temperature is increasing power output is decreasing this is because this operates by the pebble bed principle and pebble bed reactors have a power output proportional to their core temperature I mean, the ISP is increasing because core temperature is increasing, but pellet bed reactors have a decreasing power output if they get hotter. So this one, if I fire it for extended periods of time, will get continuously lower thrust, but a bit higher ISP until the core temperature reaches its maximum. Enough of that. You stop spinning. This makes me nauseous. Um, anyway. Open cycle gas core engine, the light bulb. Like I said, this one is the first of the, or is an even more advanced concept. And you can see that right away, this ISP goes to the high 2000s, 2900, almost 3000 at a pretty decent thrust. So, yeah, this one unlocks before the open cycle. And so this one is a very good engine for mid-career when you want to take your first ships or first big manned missions somewhere. Enough. Would you please just stop spinning? I don't care. All right, so if I don't fail this one, the open cycle gas core reactor, I'm gonna put both on after each other. As you can see here, this one has a way higher thrust but way lower ISP and the open cycle gas core reactor has an ISP of up to 5097 but at a lower thrust. But as you can see the core temperature is ridiculously high and it also it, but it goes down if I lower the throttle. So ISP also goes down if I lower the throttle. All right, that's it for the thermal uh, thermonuclear rockets that are one part solutions and while recording I realized that really showing off the thermal nozzles on antimatter reactors isn't the best comparison because frankly speaking antimatter is a whole other level of technology so I just pieced together a quick thermal nozzle only test bed with pebble bed reactors and right now the way this works is that as long as these nozzles operate off um, a simple nuclear reactor, they all work after the same principle, heat exchanger and taking that heat to heat up the propellant and generation thrust, because you can see they all have the exact same properties. All right, the only difference is that the thermal turbojet can operate in atmospheric mode, which basically means that it's very suitable for space planes. The thermal launch nozzle can operate off oxidizer propellants, which gives it a way higher thrust, but lower ISP. And the plasma nozzle, if you would connect that to a reactor that creates charged particles, it operates in a hybrid mode, uh, like hybrid magnetic and thermal mode, which can yield much higher specific impulses. This basically means that these all can operate the same way, but if you connect them to specific reactor types or put them in specific scenarios, they can provide you additional functions. And the baseline that has just this thermal mode is the thermal ramjet, which I didn't include for now because yeah, it simply is the same thing. All right, so that's it for showing off this stuff. Um, I hope you enjoyed watching. I hope you learned something maybe. And as last time, if you've got any questions or want me to go into detail on anything else, just post it in the comments and I'll see if I can get to it. Um, that's it. Next episode is going to be then, I guess, about magnetic propulsion. And as last time, thanks for watching and bye.